Hello, and welcome to my full rider's review of the Orbea Kemen. Now, I've already made a first impressions video of this bike, and uh, the first impressions were really good. This is now a full review, but I could save you an awful lot of time. I asked in that video, is this the one e-bike to rule them all? The answer is yes. Should you buy one? Yes. There you go. There will be more detail than that, but that is the essence of this video. This is a bloody amazing bike. I want everybody to snap your fingers now. I want everybody to clap your hands real loud. So other people making these videos make uh, disclaimers and things like that, so I feel I need to as well. Uh, Orbea loaned me this bike um, to ride. The review that I'm doing is as a thank you, because they didn't ask me to do a review. They've got no idea what I'm going to say. So they've been uh, loaning me a few bikes to ride. No, uh, no, no questions asked really. I had the Orbea Rise which is their e-mountain bike, lightweight e-mountain bike, uh, for a month. And I found that to be an incredible machine and it sort of prepared me for just how good e-bikes have got. I had a love affair with that bike. I'd never known anything like it. This bike is more sensible, but it's more powerful. And overall, it's more capable. What it can do is ride on the road as well as it can ride off-road. There aren't many bikes that that is true for. This is definitely one of them. I thought when I saw its fenders and its kickstand and its running lights and its headlight, I thought this is a commuting bike. Well you could use it for commuting. It's an excellent bike all around. It rolls really nicely on tarmac. I'm on tarmac at this moment having just come off gravel we're just cruising along without any effort, no, uh, no assist at 24 and a half kilometers an hour. So of course the answer is yes, this bike would make a great commuting bike. But where it really excels is as an adventure bike, an adventurer's bike maybe. I've been everywhere on this bike, absolutely everywhere. There is no road that I've thought, hmm, I'm not sure I can do that. I've just been taking them. I've been doing trails, single track, rough, horrible, rough stuff, which is beyond my uh, comfort zone. And to be honest, I do get off that again as soon as I can, but the bike is capable. Uh, the reason for that is because if you look at the Orbea Uran hardtail mountain bike, it's the same frame as this. This is a all out hardtail mountain bike that they've softened a little maybe. Anyway, we've just moved from uh, tarmac to gravel. Um, there's no difference in how the bike feels. I've got the uh, suspension set up for me very nicely and uh, it works immaculately. Obviously as a hardtail you do feel a little bit more through your bottom but in terms of capability it's me that gives up first not the bike. So like I say we're on gravel now and the speed, without assist, is 25. It rides itself, this bike. But when you do want some assist, if anything, this bike has too much. It's got the full power uh, EP8 Shimano uh, motor, mid motor. It's got 85 Newton meters of torque. So that's the stuff that gets you off the line fast and will drag your sorry ass up a huge incline. Now, as to the huge inclines, I have been beaten. I tried a 43% climb uh, trail, a track, and I had to step off. That wasn't the bike giving up, that was me. I felt really uncomfortable. But I have gone up way over 30% with this bike and not in level three, not in the maximum power. 
it's just got tons and tons and tons of power. So I ride all of my rides now with the bike either off or in one, or when it gets really stupidly steep, I put it in two and three is just not used. I can't imagine when you would need to use it unless you are maybe almost dying and you just need to get home so you can call an ambulance. Actually forget that, you wouldn't need an ambulance, you'd just put it in maximum and the bike could take you to the hospital. So for a bit more disclosure and to give you an idea of how this bike might compare for you, I am sadly I'm at 122 kilos at the moment and I've also been in hospital uh, two, three weeks ago for uh, a heart condition. We're still uh, trying to figure out what it is. So what I've done is I've, I want to exercise, but I'm limiting myself to staying in what's called heart rate zone two. And since my hospitalization, I've been using a heart rate monitor and this has been provided by Kuspo. So thank you very much, Kuspo. It works as a heart rate monitor should. Um, I didn't know if it was going to be, uh, frankly, up to scratch compared to all the famous ones like Garmin. Um, but it's an excellent little unit. It's incredibly small. And uh, I don't notice it's there. Also, happily, it fits my chest, which is 54 inch. So, uh, and it's comfy. Don't, like I said, I just don't notice it's there. And it's a rechargeable one. Um, it's excellent. And I can just look down at my Garmin bike computer and it tells me what my heart rate is at any point of the ride. Now the most amazing thing about this bike, as well as its go anywhere nature, is that you can use it as a rehabilitation tool in exactly my situation. So if I want to keep my heart rate to 125 maximum, uh, I can do that easily just by uh, changing gear and changing the level of assist. So let's talk about those three levels of power. You will need to download the app. It's a Shimano Steps app. With that, you can infinitely adjust your levels of power. Not just the level of power, but also how it's applied to do with your cadence and also to do with your pedaling power. You can't ghost pedal with this bike. You can't just turn the pedals and the power will sense that you're turning the pedals and come on. You must push. And you must push at a particular cadence that you yourself have set. So this behind me is a 12% climb. I've just come up it, uh, I've actually put it into uh, assist level two and I've just ridden up it and well, I'm not exactly blowing hard. So what I would normally do on that hill is come up in uh, level one and push a bit harder so I can actually exercise my heart and get my lungs going too. But I kind of wanted to show you that 12% uh, uh, on tarmac uh, is well it's just easy if you want it to be I just need to make sure that I'm pushing on the pedals and that my cadence is you know I don't know what it is probably about 80 you don't have to go crazy you don't have to spin crazily to get the power to come on because you can change it it's a fantastic system it's worth fiddling with the app though um, I set my foot lower two levels very low because I wanted the range not the huge levels of assist that the bike can that the bike can provide so downsides to this bike not many and they're very small and niggardy ones niggle niggle -ady, niggardy what is that word no idea anyway they're tiny so going through them uh, first is tire choice if you're going to do everything the Schwalbe G1 all-round tires are the absolute dog's bollocks. They are absolutely fantastic. They roll really well on the road. I did have a bit of a gripe with them early on because I hadn't realised how important it is to get the tyre pressures exactly right. And it's difficult on an all-round bike because obviously you want the tyre pressures to be... Let's get into the proper gear here. There we go. It's only about a 2 or 3% hill here. So, you know, I'm doing 25 again with the assist in one. 
Um, where were we? Oh, nigger, nigger, I still can't say that word. Downsides to the bike. Tires are all absolutely great all round. But if you're off-road, you need lower pressure. And if you're on the road, you need higher pressure. So I was rolling uh, probably around 40 PSI, front and rear, um, just to get an idea. And uh, the very first time I went out, I did uh, 76.3 kilometers an hour down a hill. And it didn't feel very nice when I got to the bottom and went around a corner because the pressure was a little bit too low uh, for those sorts of speeds uh, on road. And I blame the tire and it wasn't the tire's fault, it was the pressure. So I've tried rolling just a little bit higher when I'm on the road, around 50, and they roll so well. But 50 is a little bit too high for off-road. So they're such massive tires, even on this one it's a 2.2 inch uh, tires. Uh, it takes a lot of pumping to get the pressure back up again. So I've sort of been cheating and I've been having the pressures around, yes you guessed it, about 45 pounds rolls well on the road but it's still a little bit hard for real off-roading so the next slight downside and this is something you can change if you actually bought the bike is the handlebars are too wide I'm uh, a very broad bloke uh, and they're too wide for me they are 800 millimeters wide I think the first thing I would do if I was to keep the bike would be to cut them down and move everything inboard a little it's actually very difficult to even get them in through a door and as a commuting bike, well, you're going to want to be able to get it into your place of work and back home when you get home. So uh, the bars being that wide, it's actually quite a, quite a problem. Of course, the extra control it gives you off-road is lovely. But if you need to make a balance, uh, bars this wide, well, they're just too big. And I also found um, having such wide bars on longer rides was actually quite uncomfortable. Um, so again, it's just something that I would by preference I would I would cut down and the next problem is not really a problem for everyone either it's the amount of power <laughs> it's too much some people say you can't have too much you really can um, for me cycling is about turning the pedals putting some power down and getting a response this should give you uh, an assist on that and on level three it can take over a bit and all of a sudden you're off you, you don't need to go that fast up that hill truly you don't and of course it has an effect on range. And I'd rather ride on a nice long ride than uh, be pushed up hills on a very short ride in max power. But it's horses for courses. Uh, again, with more uh, time with this bike, I would make sure that all three levels were quite low. I've actually toned down levels one and two already, but level one is still a bit too much. I like the idea of uh, level one being you just leave it in level one and it just gives you a little nudge like a, a tiny bit of a tailwind. I think that's what level one is for me. Um, and of course you can do that with this bike, um, but you don't really need, you don't really need all that extra power. And these are the sorts of places that this bike can bring you. On this bike I can choose my level of assist in the gear and it will get me up here. So I'm having adventures that I've never had before because of this bike, despite having a heart condition. I absolutely love it. So right in the middle of this serious review of this amazing bike, your Bayer Kemen, I realized that I've never been up to the castle, the new castle at Fleesh, because the roads are basically just way too steep. And your Bayer have just mentioned that they would like the bike back. So I thought, well, I might be in the middle of a review, but um, let's pop up there and have um, a look. This is what I do on my normal reviews. I do a bit of history as I uh, ride around this absolutely stunning bit of Southern Catalonia. So inevitably, I'm gonna to have to talk about range. How long's a piece of string? It really, I can't tell you. I would say the range on this bike is very good. I've done 115 kilometers on it, um, staying in my heart zone. It had over 1300 meters of climbing in it, but I did deplete the battery. That was down to nothing. If I'd been fitter, if I was allowing myself out of zone two with my heart, it would be a lot more. 
if I weighed less, it would be more. If I weighed more, it would be less. So, so much depends on so many other factors. Range is a very difficult one. All you can do is compare the battery size between the bikes that you're considering. They're all going to be adequate. They're all going to do a fantastic job. But the combination with this bike, I would say 540 watt hours, immensely powerful motor, would mean that generally speaking, your range would be somewhat limited if you use that power. I honestly don't think you need to use the power that this bike has. It's there if you need it, fantastic. Like towing several tons of groceries homes, for example, on a trailer, perfect. Normal riding, I don't think you'll need it. I think the range will be great. Well, I imagine you've probably had enough of looking at my face. So let's have a look at the bike. Right, well, there it is. We're gonna go through all the specifications of this bike, which is the Kemen 10. If you fancy the Kemen 10 SUV, the differences are, as far as I'm aware, the wheels are slightly fatter and the tires are fatter as well. And they have more of a mountain bike pattern, tread pattern, rather than this pattern on the Schwalbe G1 all rounders, or all round that we have on this bike more of a gravel tyre but I found them to be very very good except on very loose very rough trails in which case they're not confidence inspiring and I'd much rather have chunkier tyres with a bigger tread pattern more aggressive tread pattern on them. The shocks are 100mm travel 34mm Fox Float AWLs whereas the frankly Awesome brakes are, at the front at least, are on 180 rotors, but they're four pot Magura brakes, disc brake, hydraulic disc brakes. Whilst at the rear, they're two piston um, hydraulic brakes on a 160 mil rotor. Now I did mention this before, but it's worth mentioning again. This isn't carbon fiber. You cannot see the welds they are completely and utterly polished out smooth it's a beautiful frame they've done the same thing up at the front here this looks exactly like carbon fiber the battery is integrated into the frame the reason why they've done that though it does make it a little bit more awkward in my opinion and um, particularly if you wanted to do bike packing and just take your battery into your hotel room um, they've done it to make the um, the tubes lighter because obviously if it's a full tube with a battery inside, it's stronger than a C-shaped one with an external battery. The saddle is my own. Um, the original, oh, what was it? I'll put in a little caption what the original saddle was. I lasted about five minutes before I had to change it because everyone's different. Everyone's bottom is differently shaped. Um, for me, it was no good. So I just put on um, an old specialized bridge I had and that's been fine. And what you're seeing underneath is um, a remote dropper post, which actually on this is less so you can get over gnarly bits and pieces on the trails, although that's what I use it for, and more to make it easier to get on and off the bike when it's fully laden. There are full mud guards fitted. On the Kemen 10, they are slightly longer and narrower than on the, um, the SUV model. That's supposed to be um, so it's got greater clearance when you're going off-road. But I've really gone off-road with this bike and I've not had any problems with the fenders at all. They don't even rattle. The drivetrain is a 36 tooth up front and at the back is an 11 speed, uh, 11 to 50 tooth, uh, 11 speed cassette with a, an XT derailleur. I make no apologies for the mud on it. I've just come back from a ride. What I'm showing you here is the EP8 motor, which is the full 85 Newton meter motor. But what I like about it is that they've tilted it from this direction to actually face up the down tube. And it actually means that it's much more stealthy and harder to spot. It also gives greater clearance. 
So it's a very, very clean looking bike because the, all the cables are fully integrated. They go into the riser here. What I've noticed though, they go into the, behind this, this plastic, molded plastic piece. But I don't know how well you can see this. I'll see and get a better angle. They're supposed to be into this hole here and they've managed to push themselves to the back and just there is a tiny bit of uh, abrasion that's already happened and that is on the what is that that's on the gear lever on the on the gear cable so that's not very good um, they've been fitted too tightly there needs to be a little bit more slack in there and they need to go forwards into this gap it's worth having a look at when you buy yours now we're going to talk about lights this front design light is a high beam and dipped two power front light. It's a thousand lumens on full beam and 600 in dipped. And just below it here, you can see um, that's an integrated front light that stays on all the time when the system is on. And to switch from high and low beam, it's this button right here, right next to your thumb. So once the system, once you've turned the lights on, this is dipped and full beam. The, the way it came fitted with me, it was actually pointing almost in this direction. It was way too low. So I've loosened it and just turned it up out of the way because otherwise, as you go to change gear, you're actually turning the lights on and off. And I didn't really want the lights to be on unless I know about it because I'd imagine they must drain the battery a little bit. I forgot to mention the rear light, only it's not just a rear light. It's also a brake light. It automatically detects when you're braking and it comes on brighter. And from this slightly blurry picture, I hope you can see the remote for the system. It's the on off button at the top. It's got up and down toggles for the assist and it lets you know by colors how much battery there is remaining. And underneath, that's the um, lever for the dropper post. And of course, here's the kickstand. It's a very meaty kickstand, but we don't need to worry about the weight when we've got an e-bike. What it is, is incredibly useful and very sturdy. I use it all the time because it's there. You don't need to get off the bike to, to kick it up and down. It works extremely well. So while you're looking at a sexy slow-mo of this bike, I'll do a quick recap. This is a fantastic bike. It's an adventurer's bike. I've gone everywhere on it despite my heart condition. I've ridden 1250 kilometers and I've gone up 16,000 meters in the month. I do love this bike. It is not cheap. I think it's worth it. It's up to you whether you can make the same call, but all I can say is that you won't be disappointed if you buy one. And with that, thanks for watching.